Hello, I'm Matthew Weinstock with Hospitals and Health Networks with continuing coverage of the AHA Health Forum Rural Healthcare Leadership Conference here in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm joined right now by Harold Kruger, who is CEO of Shadron Hospital and Health Services in Shadron, Nebraska. Harold is the 2014 recipient of the Shirley Ann Monroe Leadership Award, which the AHA hands out to an outstanding rural health healthcare executive every year. Harold, thanks for being with me today. Thank you. So I guess first, can you give us a little bit of demographic background on Chadron, the hospital, and sort of your, your patient makeup? Okay, uh, we're in the far western corner of Nebraska. Uh, South Dakota is about uh, 30 miles to the north. Wyoming's about 80 miles uh, back east, uh, or west, excuse me. And uh, our demographics, uh, we cover uh, seven counties in Nebraska, four counties in South Dakota. Our patient mix is about 61% Medicare, 17% Medicaid, and we do provide a lot of services for the VA hospital in Hot Springs, Nebraska, as well as the Indian Hospital at Pine Ridge, South Dakota. And as we learned this morning during the presentation of your award, congratulations on that, by the Thank way, you. uh, you're part of, you were part of the Hospital Engagement Network program. Tell me a little bit about why you pursued that H, that initiative, what it's meant to the hospital, and what kind of results you've seen in terms of reducing patient harm? Okay, we uh, basically participate in anything that uh, will assist us in uh, uh, improving our quality for our patients. Uh, we've been uh, accident or fall free uh, with an injury for the last two years. We've been able to see marked uh, increases uh, in our outcomes in uh, urinary tract uh, infections and all the other uh, measurable things. And what does it mean to you as the leader of the organization to pursue quality and safety initiatives? Is that a top priority for you? It's number one on, on my desk. Uh, you know, everybody we serve in a small hospital, they're a relative, they're a friend, they're a neighbor. Uh, and I don't want to go home and have my next door neighbor have a bad experience. Sure, I understand that. Uh, I also want to talk to you a little about what you've done for community health through the community health resources initiative you, you have there at the hospital. Okay, uh, we call it Western Community Health Resources. Uh, very similar to a CAPWIN uh, program that you'd find in uh, larger areas. Uh, we took that on mainly because uh, they ran out of money and they were going to close it. So we picked up all of the services. Uh, we think that they're extremely important from child immunization, especially right now. Uh, we have four different food programs. We have respite care. So if you have a child with special needs and you need a night out, we provide a well-trained babysitter. You know, just a whole host of those uh, little items that come with it. Uh, we have another program called uh, Welcome Baby, where when I had children, I had a mom and a grandmother, and we don't seem to have that anymore. Who do you call for, you know, uh, to ask a question, like how long should a baby cry, or how many times should I change a diaper? So within 24 to 48 hours, we send a trained RN into the home, meet with the mom, they approve us coming, and we're the kind of their resource. We become their grandma. And, and it seems like that initiative and others, you've really made an effort to reach out into the community there to be more than just a hospital to the patient population you're serving, right? Well, it took me five years to convince my board I wasn't in the illness business. I was in the people business. And that meant keeping, keeping them help, uh, healthy. Uh, we're also into the housing uh, for low-income elderly. Uh, we try to keep our community fed. We have a soup kitchen. Uh, you know, if you can feed your community and house your community, you can keep them out of the ER. I also want to ask you a little bit about what you've done in terms of expanding uh, IT throughout the rural community in that part of Nebraska, which is uh, an important piece of what you've been working on. Well, the Nebraska Rural Health, Health, Health Network, uh, we received a, an FCC grant uh, for roughly $22 uh, million. Uh, we buried uh, our own fiber optic, and uh, we were the first to get approval to allow a commercial company to be a partner with us. Uh, at the end of the project, uh, tying eight hospitals uh, together with a, a non-interruptible uh, link, uh, which tied us into uh, a radiology group in Denver, to the Lambda Rail system, the Internet 2 system, uh, we have continuous high-speed Internet. We can get an X-ray read uh, in 15 minutes or less. So that's huge for that. We had some money left over, and the government didn't want it back. So we took and we buried an additional about 1,200 miles from Shadron into Omaha 
tied us into a, a health repository, and then back out and allowed another 40-some rural hospitals to join that network. Wow, so it seems like if you combine what you've been doing in the community, what you've done with some of the IT issues, you've really positioned Sh Shadron to, to move towards that next curve of healthcare that we're, we've been talking about here at the meeting for the past day or two. Well, we buy into that next move, and we want to be part. You know, healthcare is changing fast. I don't know if I'm smart enough to keep up anymore, but uh, uh, we'll be around for a while. And I guess lastly on that, that notion, where do you see critical access hospitals fitting in in this new environment that we're moving towards in healthcare, and what do they need to do to, to adapt their models? Well, we all have to realize we can't be everything to everybody. Uh, what part we're going to play, I don't know yet as it's evolving. Uh, we need to be there to deliver babies. We're the only hospital within 150 miles that's doing that. If I can't deliver babies and take care of trauma in the emergency room, what good are we? Uh, after that, uh, you know, we've talked for years about rural hospitals being transport triage centers. And I think that's where we're going to end up going. Well, great, Harold. I appreciate you taking some time today. Sorry for being nervous, but I don't do this often. That's quite okay. <laughs> And I'm Matthew Weinstock with Hospitals and Health Networks. We'll have more coverage from the Rural Healthcare Leadership Conference, so look for that on our website and at in HNHN Daily. Thanks for tuning in.